Hey guys, it's uh, Creature Senior back again for uh, another uh, quickie informative review video. This one would be dealing with a uh, Sears Craftsman leaf blower uh, that was originally manufactured uh, for Sears by Poland. So this is a Poland uh, produced machine, even though it uh, has Sears on the outside of the machine as well too. But this is definitely a Poland source machine. And I'll give you a cover, I'll give you a picture of the actual cover right here for the engine, specifically on the actual shroud. This is the uh, Sears Craftsman, uh, 200 miles per hour, 430 CFM, uh, 25 cc gas leaf blow. This is the two stroke engine on here. And what I'm, what I'm going to be talking about specifically is uh, hard starting, will not start. Um, possible stalling surging issues uh, one of the design problems that we've seen with uh, some of these Polands out there after using for a long time a three four five years of heavy or hard usage out there we see this problem quite frequently uh, the problem is that the machine won't start or hard starting or this plane will start and just die out or run erratically possibly and sometimes the problem results from this one fact uh, what happens is you have two bolts that retain the actual cylinder assembly right here to the actual uh, lower crank uh, assembly down here and what happens is these two bolts I'll give you a uh, picture with my flashlight right here <clears throat> sorry about this here we go there's a one bolt right there you can see right there in the shadows there's a one bolt and here's a second bolt behind there on the opposite side of the cylinder it's straight down in that small little hole right there you can see it right there on the top so you have one on the one side on the right hand side over here and one on the left hand side right there if you're looking at it from my specific uh, point right here for that and what happens is those two um, actual bolts uh, loosen up over time typically it might take uh, two to five years to happen uh, if you have a commercial, if you use your machine for commercial applications, it can happen as little as about a year and a half's time. Because I had a guy here who was commercial uh, usage uh, of one of these machines, and he basically used his machine, um, you know, call maybe for three or four hours every single day out there. And because of that fact, uh, his engine was getting extremely loose after about a year and a half's time, as I recall from about, I think it was about two years ago when he originally had his machine similar to this one right here for the same exact problem. And what you have to do, uh, there's there's two fixes. Uh, either you can do the cheap and dirty fix. I personally do not recommend. But if you want to do it yourself, uh, you can you can do it yourself. Uh, I recommend getting a uh, Torx. I see right here the Torx T30 uh, driver right here. Torx T30 driver, and you just stick it down inside here, and you torque up the actual um, bolt uh, to. I uh, we won't call it. make sure make sure it's nice and tight make sure it's nice and snug down there when the engine's cold don't do it when it's hot because anytime something's hot it usually expands a bit more than when it's cold right there for that. that's that's typically the cheap and dirty way of uh, fixing the problem however uh, it probably won't last so that's why I recommend doing a second uh, fix right there for that the second fix involves taking the actual uh, cylinder assembly will this pays they take the whole engine out of the subframe of the machine which means you have to disassemble the um uh the big impeller on the opposite side of the end you got to take the impeller assembly off the machine in order to uh, get the uh, engine out of the actual frame assembly right here as well too so because the impeller on the opposite side of the machine is hooked up to your crankshaft is coming out on the left hand side you have to disassemble that first before you pull the engine out of the frame assembly right here for that so once you get that out of there you can actually take the uh, uh, two uh, bolts out of here and you can pull them straight up out and what you want to do is you want to clean the actual uh, holes down inside the actual uh, crank down here you want to blow them out some brake clear hit them some ether down there or uh, brake clear ether what you want to do then blow them out real good make sure they're completely clean and dry down inside there then uh, just clean up the threads on the actual bolts the actual mounting bolts um, then you want to get some red loctite and you want to put the red loctite on the actual threads and you want to thread them back down there let the loctite sit for about I say about me personally anytime I do a job like that I'd let it sit for about uh, 6 to 12 hours. I do not start the machine until the following morning so I know all the parts will be completely uh, clean and tight and dry so everything will be back together perfectly fine as it was originally at the factory. Um, at the factory I believe they put blue Loctite on some of them out there. I've seen ones with red Loctite but um, 
some of the ones I've seen were typically blue, so I don't know if the manufacturer decided to switch back and forth from uh, different Loctite types, but uh, that's what they use at the factory. So I personally recommend using red because red's permanent Loctite, and you do not want your cylinder to uh, flop around. What actually happens is, I'll show you a picture right here. <clears throat> Let me get my flashlight again. Here's your actual casing right here. As you see right here, let me see, get a better picture for you guys. Right my fingers at right here, you have a seal right between these two right here. You can see this little flat seal growing right along uh, the side right here. Let me, let me get a better pointer right here for you guys. Sorry here. Okay, here we go. You got a little gap right here. See this gap right along here? What happens is the bolts, they, they loosen up, and I've seen machines have a gap anywhere between an eighth of an inch up to about a quarter of an inch. This whole cylinder assembly would be flopping up and down, and because of that, your engine, since it's a two-stroke design, has to have a proper gas mix ratio and you have to have a sealed crank case in order for the two stroke to operate properly at its uh, recommended efficiency ratings so if you don't have that thing sealed properly your engine will not run properly and because of that you might have hard starting dying out stalling and that's one of the problems with these pollen sourced machines as you see right here uh, most other machines out there they have Typically four bolts that actually retain the cylinder to the lower crank unit right there for that. So personally, I don't like the pulling design. However, you can't do anything about it. So you have to um, at least deal with it and move on from that point by simply either cleaning up the threads and torquing them down or simply taking the engine out of the actual frame assembly and putting red Loctite on her and put them back down inside there and torquing them up. So that's basically the only two ways that... Um, you can actually solve that one specific problem with the machine. So if anybody has any comments, questions, as usual, simply feel free to leave me a message here, and I'll try to answer any kind of basic questions you have similar to this right here. So I'll see you guys. Have a nice day.